Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're having a little look at Rust again. So last week I showed you how to quickly install, set up and get your own server working on your local machine so you can jump into Rust single player and kind of mess around, play around, give yourself resources, that sort of thing. However, when I tried to install mods on it, it just was not working. I couldn't get any plugins to work or anything. So what I've had to do is take a look back and go, right, is there a different method to do this, which isn't just a quick method? And there is. So that's what we're here to look at today is a different method. Not It's not quicker, but of how to get this all set up on your local computer. You can even invite friends. You can bring friends into your server, that sort of thing. Bear in mind, that doesn't mean you have to open ports up, kill firewalls, that sort of things. If you're comfortable doing all that. I'm not going to show you how to do that in this video. You have to look elsewhere for that. But this is how to get your own server set up on your local machine and then install Oxide or U-Mods onto it. So without further ado, let's crack straight on with it. And don't forget, if you like this video, drop a like. If you like what I do, subscribe as well because there's plenty more of these sort of videos up and coming. So... What I want you to do is head over to this website here, which is developer.valvesoftware.com slash wiki slash steamcmd. Just Google steamcmd. It'll come straight up. And you want to head down the page a little bit to where it says Windows. Create a folder for steamcmd, for example, that, and download. Eh, you don't have to do that first. We'll do something else. But all you got to do is click that download link like there. Download the file, it'll go into your downloads folder, and then just say copy to your desktop or whatever you want to do. So when that's done, you'll have this Steam CMD zip file. I use 7-zip. It's one of the better ones out there, but there is WinRAR and that sort of thing, so you can have any of them. And then what I want you to do is create your own little folder on your desktop or wherever you want to create it, and just call it like Rust Server, your name and Rust Server, or whatever, so it's easy, recognizable where it is. Open up your zip file, open up your test folder or server folder, whatever you want to call it. And you're just going to drag Steam CMD into there. You can extract it if you want to do it that way. Some will have to make you extract, some you can just click and drag. It's why I like 7-zip. I can just click and drag and it does it for me. We don't need that zip file anymore, so we're going to click off it. Hopefully you're with me so far. We're going to open CM Steam CMD. We get this little screen coming up, which is going to download some updates and stuff all in the background. You don't have to press anything yet. And then we're going to log into Steam CMD. So the easiest way is to do a nominus, which, I don't know about you, I always find that, that word really hard to spell. <laughs> um, or you can actually log in using your proper Steam ID and password. I don't know why you would ever do that, but you can if you want. So all you do is type in... Login. We'll keep that small because I'm going to have to play between folders. Can you see now that the Rust server's filled up with loads of stuff now? So we've got Steam apps and that. That's how you know it's kind of works. So we're going to click Login, space, Anonymous, A-N-O-N-Y-M-O-U-S. And then press Enter. And there you go. It's connected anonymously to Steam Public. It's logged in OK. Waiting for user info. And it's building a few more of these on here. Once that is done, then what we want is to get the app downloaded into here. So this gives up our dedicated um, server. Pretty easy to do. What I would suggest is you just install it straight into here. However, you can select a different folder, but it makes things way more complicated down the line. So if I was you, I would just keep it in where it is. If you do want a force install, as it's called somewhere else, you type in force underscore install de, and then you put your directory in inverted commas. So if you wanted like to put C colon backslash somewhere or whatever, I would, I would just say I would advise against it. It just confuses things further on down the line. So just forget about that. Type in app, oops, app underscore update 258550 validate so that's app underscore app update 258550 validate press enter and what that's going to do is unpack there you go that's a good term for you 
the rest of the server into here. So you'll see this kind of build up and it'll build. It's kind of like, you know, when we did it last week with the simple server, it's kind of just doing that, but manually. And then what we're going to do while that is doing that, we're going to create what is called a script. And what it means is if there's a Rust update, which there usually is every couple of weeks, we can just click this file. And instead of us manually typing that in, it'll just do it for us. So I hope that kind of makes sense. It's pretty easy to do. So what we're going to do is this is at 20%. So while it's doing that, we're going to right click in your Rust folder. We're going to go new. We're going to go down to text document. We're going to name it update rust dot bat. doesn't matter what it's called as long as you know it, it's to update your game. So don't call it something random. Just call it update rust, update game, update server, whatever you want to call it. And then press enter. Click yes if that message comes up and you'll see it becomes a bat file. A bat file is like a batch file which executes things. Then I want you to right click on it. Go to edit. So once your notepad is open, I want you to type in the following. Steam cmd.exe space plus login space anonymous space plus app underscore update 258550 space validate space plus quit. Now I said it's in the description if you just want to copy and paste it from there. Basically, to give you a bit of background, what it's doing is saying, right, open up steamcmd.exe, which is this. Log in anonymously, which we've done before. Then I want you to put app underscore update 258550, which will then check the files in the background to make sure you have the latest ones. Then I want you to quit. That's basically what that's saying. Once you've done that, just click file, click save, and then exit out of there. Behind the scenes, you can now see that is fully downloaded. Next step is I want you to go in Steam Apps, Common, Rust Dedicated. Once you're in the folder, I want you to right click again, go to New, go to Text Document, and this is what you're going to use to start your game. So you can call it start.bat, you can call it, then right click on it and go to Edit. I then want you to go in to the description of this video and copy the following text like so. Just make sure, because YouTube can be a bit funny in descriptions sometimes, that you have a gap here and here. So just make sure it says call on start, then a gap, then gap at the end as well. What this is basically telling you is another batch file. This is an infinite loop batch file. It means your server's not going to crash and stuff like that. So that's why it says go to start again. So it's going up the start, doing that, to there, back to the top, along there, constantly. So that's what it's basically saying. Um, if we look, break it down a little bit easier, there's the server port you would give your friends and kind of open up on your router and your firewall and stuff like that. 28015. You can call that like 28016, 28017, what kind of whatever you need to on there. Plus server level, procedural map. There is different maps in the game. There's only two or three, like King of the Hill, I think the other one is, or something like that. So you can change that into there if you want. Server seed is just a random server seed. So you can see in this case 5500. Doesn't really matter. It could be server seed 99999. Server world side is how big your server's gonna be. How many players you want on your server. So if it's just going to be you running around, just change it to one. It doesn't need to be 10. If you're going to invite nine friends, obviously make it 10. And then server host name is just what you want to call your server. So as you can see, I've got mine called 15 Minute Gamer. Also remember, if you're going to have spaces in here, you put inverted comma, 15 Minute Gamer, inverted comma, space, inverted comma, test, inverted comma. So you like kind of separate them all off with the, the inverted comma things up there. And then what we're going to do is click File and Save. Then when you've done, click out of that and click Start.bat. Start.bat will bring this up and it'll start basically running through and opening up the server for you. So that will take a few minutes. So I'll be back in a second. When it's done, it'll look something like this. And now what you can do, jump into Steam and open up Rust. 
on here, press the F1 key. In your console, you type in the following. This is how you access your thing. Just copy and paste it. I'll put it in the description below. Connect localhost call on 28015 or whatever you set your thing. So if you put 28016, just remember you can do that. Press enter. And there you go. We have now spawned into the world. I'm changing my graphic settings by the looks of it. <laughs> Look at that trees. Good God. Right. So yeah, now you'll be like, right. But I want to install mods. So let's look how you do that then. So let's exit out the game. Once you exit out the game, what we're going to do is on your server, just type the word quit. And that will quit and shut the server down. It will start going through the loop of installing it again. As soon as you see that, you can just press the X. See there? Just press the X in the top and exit out. That's all you need to do. Because remember, we'll put on an infinite loop. So it's always going to go back and do it again. Right, next step is downloading the UMOD or Oxide Mods or whatever you want to call them. So head over to umod.org slash games or Google it or I'll put a link in the description. It's up to you guys. Click on games up at the top. Don't click games and then search. Just click games. So remember that, just click games. Go to Rust. And then you'll see the download file and just hit the download button. Easy as that. Once that's downloaded, go into your downloads folder. Once it's downloaded, I want you to head back into your test Rust server or whatever you called it. Go into Steam Apps, Common, and Rust Dedicated. Open up the zip you just downloaded. You'll see one of the files, or the only file, is called Rust Dedicated underscore data, which as you can see is right there. All I want you to do is click and drag. It'll ask you if you want to replace some files. Click yep. There we go. Click start.bat. And if we bring this back over here, we should see some new things pop up. So you'll see compiler.exe pop up and an oxide file as well. That's when you know it's working. And you can see here it's, it's loading up new stuff. So that's when you know it's working. And if you don't see them come up, it means you've done something wrong. This is what was happening when I tried it on the quick start guide. I just couldn't get these two files to come up. So yeah, that's when you know it's done. And then just let it run through the process. So mods are installed in Oxide and plugins. So what I want you to do is head back over to UMods. At the top, you'll see something called plugins. Don't click search, just click plugins. Make sure Rust is selected. You don't know if you've downloaded anything else. And then sort by most downloads. It doesn't really matter what you sort of by, but obviously most downloads is going to be the most common ones and the ones that probably work the best. So if we just select, say, Gala Manager, click on it. You'll see here, it tells you exactly what it does, what the console commands are, what it does, and a few examples. So the gather rate dispenser wood of 10. So 10 times as much wood from hitting trees and ore and stuff like that. So that's your, that's some of the examples. And I'm sure from there you could work out what else you need to do. So you're going to go at to the top and click a download up there. Once it's downloaded, you'll get this little file, which is gathermanager.cs. And all you do is drag it into your plugins folder, like so. So once it's done, open up your server again. As you can see here, it automatically does this once you drag it in. But if you want to reload, just type oxide dot reload space star. And that will reload the plugins for you. So just in case you want to check to make sure everything's installed correct. If you go back a step in your folder and go to config, you'll find the config for this. Right click on it. Click edit with notepad plus plus. If you don't have plus plus installed, you can use other programs. I would highly recommend notepad plus plus though. There's a load of things in here. It just tells you some general settings. If we open up back UMOD inside here, you should see some of the settings in here, things you might want to change. There's nothing really to change in there because most of it's done within the server. So say I want to set it to gather stone five times quicker. We're just going to copy that. So copy, go back to our server, paste it, enter. Now we get five times more stone when we hit a stone deposit. So it's as easy as that to set up. And finally, 
the last step is to make you the admin of this so that you can make changes, you can enter no clip, you can give yourself weapons, you can give yourself materials, everything like that, all the good stuff, which is the whole point you want to be playing single player and running your own server. So what you do is grab your Steam ID. I find it's easier to get from Steam ID IO. You can get it from uh, Steam if you want to, but mine is never there, I don't know why. And you need this long number here. So this one here, so we're just gonna copy that. We're gonna go back into our server. We're gonna type in owner ID space, like that. You can put your name afterwards, so if you wanna put what your name is, like 15 minute gamer or whatever, just remember to put the inverted commas and a space. Press enter, and there we go. We are now the owner of this server, so we can now make all the changes, do what we need to do, mess around, and then just go open up Rust again. So now we're in the game, we can press F1. We can give ourselves anything we want to by clicking on items, so if we want an assault rifle, um, There you go, we have an assault rifle. We can press the console key again. We've got a console. We can type in no clip. And fly with me. Let's fly, let's fly away. So yeah, we can just go around the world now and find somewhere nice to set up, play around, hunt some animals. Of course, I have no ammo left now because I've just fired it, but give yourself more ammo. And that is how it works. It's as easy as that. Let's find a rock to hit. Um, you'll do fine. Just to, I don't know, need an actual rock. There we go. So we'll no clip out of there. Go to items and we need it. See, you got everything you need on there. Resources tool. We'll give ourselves a nice salvage ice pick on. And remember, we upped the amount. So let's see how many we get per hit. 560. Look at that. And just from doing that, we got one, two, three, four, five, five thousand rock. <laughs> if you see here, yeah, back normal, we're only getting 20 from that because we didn't up the sulfur ore. And there you go, guys. You can now go and have fun and do whatever you want. Single player, you don't have to worry about players killing you. You can play around, you can play with base designs, you can do more management, you can do whatever you like. So I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope it was useful. And I will catch you all in the next one. Goodbye.